Good day, ladies and gentlemen. This is Saul van Grinnen, a.k.a. Mr. VG. And you're back. And I'm back for some more superhero training. In this specific video, we are going to have a look at how do I solve problems in physical sciences. Whoa, woo, physical sciences, sir. I want to run to the hills. I want to help you to rather stay in there, stay in the fight, and make sure you get this right. Remember, there has been five videos before this. This is video six of seven. And this video specifically is when you get those problems in your homework, as well as in your exams. How do I solve them? So your first technique that we are going to have a look at is the gung-ho approach. If you've never heard that word before, please go and watch my other videos. The gung-ho approach is fantastic when I just run into the problem, where I don't have to think much. Problems like this one, where we are talking about hypotheses, where we are talking about scenarios and experiments. Also, when I have organic chemistry, there's a lot of times where we can just run into this just based on the theory because they just ask me questions and I give them one-line answers or they ask me to solve a small little problem. Remember, ladies and gents, you can score time and marks on these kind of questions, but make sure you get them spot on, 100% correct. Sometimes in physical sciences, a lot of times in physical sciences actually, we are going to go from mining, in other words, where they give you information and you dig and you dig and you dig, and then you actually look at the formulas and you look at, but how can I make that happen? So the monkey behind the mountains. So if I go from mining to the monkey behind the mountains, an example of that is one like this. A solution of sodium hydroxide, NaOH, is prepared by dissolving 6 grams of solid NaOH by 500 cubic centimeters of water. The solution reacts completely with 10 grams impure ammonium chloride. According to that equation, and the first question is, calculate the concentration. Okay, so let's quickly stop. Let's do our mining proper. First of all, they tell me there's 6 gram of solid NaOH. That's important. Next up, they tell me it's NaOH. Very important because that might come into play with molecular mass. Last, or well not last, but last for what we are going to need it for, is 500 cubic centimeters of water. So now, there's this little bit of information, which is not necessary, but it's still there. 10 grams of impure ammonium chloride is reactant with it. So, where does the monkey behind the mountain leave me? The concentration is the monkey. So we need a formula to find the other mountains. Now, the formula is C is equal to N over V. N has to do with your number of moles. But for number of moles, I need mass over molecular mass. Oh, the mass is 6 grams. The molecular mass we get from it being NaOH. And lastly, the volume of water. Well, there I've got all the variables that I need. Mining, going over to monkey behind the mount. For our second question about going over from mining to monkey behind the mountains, we are first of all going to have a look at a tow truck that pulls a car along a gravel road. Now the force applied by the engine of the tow truck is 9,000 newtons. The mass of the tow truck is 1,300 kilograms and the mass of the car is 950 kilograms. The vehicles are connected to each other by an inelastic tow bar of negligible mass. See the diagram below. The tow truck and car move at a constant velocity. 
before we go over to the question, let's just mine in to kind of go, what information has been given to us? So ladies and gents, we start off by looking at the tow truck. It's pulled forward by 9,000 newtons. The mass of the tow truck is 1,300 kilograms. And the mass of the car is 950 kilograms. Now this is going to be quite important because, you know, we're going to use it in our formulas. Now we get to an interesting thing about the constant velocity being that A is equal to zero. When A is equal to zero, it gives me the option of looking at all the different formulas that have A's in it. So on the formula sheet, you've got three. The second two, VF squared and just VF, I'm going to eliminate simply because, well, they have absolutely nothing to do with this question because we're not talking about initial and final velocities and those kind of things. But I am going to have a look at F net equal to M times A. Let's go over to the question and let's look. If the coefficient of the kinetic friction between the tow truck tires and the road surface is 0.45, here comes a very important thing. They tell me we're talking about kinetic friction, which means mu k. And this brings me to f of k equal to mu k times by big F of k. That is the formula for the amount of friction the tow truck experiences as it is moving. Remember, that's what the K stands for, kinetic. Then we go and have a look at what was actually asked. Now we're going away from mining and we're going to move over to the monkey behind the mountain. Now the monkey is the tension in the tow truck or the tow bar. The mountains... For the mountains, I've got to be careful because for the mountains, before I can actually find the mountains, I need to draw up a sketch. Now, for me to draw up a sketch, I'm going to look at what's pulling it forward, what is holding it back. So, in other words, what is pulling the tow bar forward, that is the net force of the truck, what's holding it back is the tension. So... F net is equal to the truck pulling it forward and plus the tow bar pulling it back. Now, I said that very important. Remember that T is smaller than zero because it is in the opposite direction of the force pulling it forward. Now, to get to where we want to go, I've just got to look at what is the net force of the truck. First of all, the 9,000, the engine is pulling it forward. But then, I've got friction. So the friction needs to be removed. So in other words, I can use F net equal M times A in my first of my formulas. And to get F of K, I just use the kinetic friction that was given to me. Boom, and there we've got it. As simple and as easy as that. But it comes from getting those formulas, eliminating the ones you do not have, and constantly looking at where you want to go. Last but not least, I'm going to have a look at a little weird question where we go from the monkey beyond the mountains to mining. Now, if I go from the monkey behind the mountains to mining, now this is not found often in physical science. But a question like this next one is a good example. You've got two spheres working in on X. Calculate the magnitude of the net force on sphere X due to sphere Y and sphere Z. So before I actually look at all the info, I'm first going to look at what they want me to solve, which is the magnitude of the net force on sphere X. That's my monkey. So my mountains, first of all, I've got Z that is going to attract X. Then I have Y that's also going to attract X. 
which means the resultant force, the net force of X is going to be that red one from the start of the tail of the green to the end of the arrow of the blue. And because it's at a 90 degrees, it means I can use Pythagoras. Woo! But now, I just quickly need to find our F. So F, I go to my formula sheets and I find K times Q1 times Q2 over R squared because they work with a charge. Where do I get the first charge? The Z on X, well, that's the blue. The charge for Y on X, well, that's the green. So then, I've got to remember that I can now calculate F net. But an important little tidbit that was told to me by one of my physical sciences colleagues. Remember that the signs are not included in calculating F. The signs are only for attraction or repulsion. So in a nutshell, ladies and gents, in physical sciences, the first little bit of advice is always draw up a sketch when you don't have a scenario. Secondly, if it doesn't require much thinking, run into the problem, the gung-ho approach. But most of the time, you're going to start by mining through all of the information, finding the information that you need. Go over to the formula sheet. Look for a formula that is applicable for that scenario. And then you simply use that awesome mathematical mind of yours to solve that problem. Ladies and gents, this is Saul van Grenen, a.k.a. Mr. VG, signing out. Have a wonderful, wonderful day, a wonderful evening, and an amazing afternoon. Cheers.